You know, magic, sleight of hand magic anyway, works by misdirection. It's a quick motion of one hand while the eye is drawn over there. The real work of making the coin vanish happens in the other hand. And we got a sense of that on a cosmic scale on February 15, 2013. While the whole world was watching the close approach of asteroid 2012 DA14, which was going to come very close to the Earth inside the orbit of our geosynchronous satellites, no one was looking in the other direction when, by remarkable coincidence, an undetected, unnamed hunk of rock about a third of that size entered the skies over Chelyabinsk, Russia, and exploded with the force of about 500 kilotons. That's the size of a smallish H-bomb and 30 times the force of energy released by the little boy atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. It literally burned brighter than the sun. Joining me now to wipe our collective brows over this are Steve Green and Scott Ott. Welcome, fellas. Yeah. And guys, speaking of coincidences, not only did this occur on the same day as the near miss that we were expecting, this explosion over the skies of Russia, there was the largest object to enter the atmosphere in over 100 years. The previous winter being the Tunguska event, also in Russia, which flattened trees for miles. Now, Steve, the Russians got a lot luckier this time than they did with Tunguska. The object that we saw came in on the 15th, came in at about an angle of about 20 degrees. It's actually very shallow. And so it exploded 25 miles up in the sky. Even so, about 1,000 people were injured by the blast. If it had come in at the angle of the Tunguska object, there wouldn't be any Chelyabinsk left to talk about. Now, are you one of those, wow, that was lucky guys, or are you one of those, wow, what bad luck kind of guys? <laughs> no, I'm a wow, we were lucky guy. Uh, this sort of thing has happened in our history many times before. The, 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 the process of wiping out the dinosaurs was finished with, when one of these monsters hit the Yucatan Peninsula about 68 million years That's ago. Right. Uh, they've, and they've carbon dated this. They've got the timing down almost exactly with this thing now. We, we know that's what happened. And the big one that came inside the orbit of the moon, it came inside the orbit of the moon. That's huge. That thing its orbit intersects our orbit. That means one of these days, those two bodies are going to collide. Is it going to hit an ocean? Is it going to hit Paris? Are we going to have to send Bruce Willis up on a titanium space shuttle? I don't know. What I do know is we aren't prepared, and we know it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Yeah, that's right. Well, Scott, here's another cheery thought for you. If this event had happened 30 years ago at the height of the Cold War, things might have been a lot worse because Russian radar did not detect this object at all. Even today, in 2013, one Russian general went on record saying it was an American's weapons test. So things could have been a lot worse if that had happened 30 years ago, huh? That would have just been the beginning. Well, yeah, and one of the amazing things about this, uh, this explosion in the atmosphere was how many times it was captured on video. I mean, if you go on YouTube, you'll see that, you know, we've got cameras that are monitoring buildings for security that captured it. We've got dash cams that captured it. We've got people who happen to be pointing their flip video camera at the sky. I mean, we've got so many angles on this thing. It's just phenomenal. But imagine in an era when we didn't have instantaneous communication between governments and around the world, how this thing would have been interpreted. That, that explosion, I mean, one of those scenes that you saw where everything just goes white reminds me of, you know, tests at Bimini. And yep. so, you know, we should be grateful that this happened when it did. There's another phenomenon here, too, that I think, you know, if you were having some really big problems that day and, you know, some concern was really worrying you, some relationship that you were having a hard time with, and then the sky explodes like that, it just kind of puts everything into perspective, how small we are and how small our problems are. And, and maybe we need to be a little bit more, as my kids would say, chill. <laughs> That sensation of the sky exploding happens to Steve Green pretty much every weekend. Uh, Steve, uh, this, this government... Weekend, you take that back. That's every morning. <laughs> it's, there's a meteor coming into the atmosphere somewhere right at this minute. I'll drink to that. Uh, Steve, you know, this government has spent $16 trillion that it doesn't have. Now, a little over a decade ago, there was a proposal to launch an infrared spectrum asteroid detector that would have been able to catch not just the big object that missed us, but also the little one that didn't. Total price tag for that mission was about $115 million. That's a rounding error today. Isn't that the kind of thing a government should be spending money on? Absolutely it is. National defense is, is one of the, the three, maybe four core functions of our government. It's, it's national defense. You, you protect the, the, the physical integrity of the nation and the, uh, the, the lives of its people. Now look, we know we're going to get smacked. 
there are things out there that are going to hit us someday. Absolutely, this is a national defense issue, and it's it's blown up. We are probably, you know, this is going to go up on YouTube, and we're going to be, uh, we're you're just going to be a million comments about what 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 crackpots we are to say this is a national defense issue, but it is. We need to get serious about it right now, right the hell now. <laughs> if we wanted, if we wanted a million hits on YouTube, Steve. What we should have said was we all were praying that this thing would have, would have exploded over a brony convention. That ought to get our numbers up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a shame. If only the angle and the timing had been different. Okay, That's come on, right. bring it on, bronies. We're ready. Missed opportunity there. Oh, man. You know, Scott, this isn't this really another reminder uh, to all of us of this sort of weird dichotomy of modern life. You were talking about it just a moment ago. Don't you think we should be proud and happy that our lives have become so safe and unexpected death is just so relatively uncommon, yet we don't seem to be happy at all? You know, Winston Churchill once said, there is nothing more exhilarating than being shot at without result. Well, we just got shot at without result. Did that any perspective to your life? Yeah, it should give uh, us at least a sense of urgency that time is fleeting, that the moments you have on this, this little orb uh, are going to be brief, and that that thing that you thought you were going to accomplish someday, well, maybe you should do it now before you get struck by a meteor or something. And I'll tell you, there are some people like that in Russia right now. You know what they're doing? They're going around scooping up pieces of rock and selling them. They, they, they're claiming that they're pieces of the meteor, but apparently... Ounce for ounce, pieces of this media are now going for greater than the price of gold. So there's, there's some uh, Ruskies that are carpe, carpeing the diem. <laughs> they're, they're carpeing the per diem. Uh, folks, you know, the good news is we've had for many years now a program to detect objects big enough to do civilizational damage. The dinosaur killer type asteroids that wipe out all life on Earth have to be pretty big. And the bigger they are, the easier they are to spot. We know where they are now. That's the good news. The bad news is, as we saw on February 15th, is that there are also objects out there big enough to destroy a city, yet small enough to escape our current detection methods. Now, these objects hit the Earth about once a century. Most of the Earth is the Pacific Ocean, and a lot of the rest of it is Russia. Now, the bad news, good news dichotomy continues. The smaller the object, the more of them there are. But the smaller the object, the easier they are to deflect if we have enough time. And the more time we have, the easier that task becomes. Now, conservatives like me and the rest of our trifecta team rail against government and spending so much, so often, so vehemently, that a lot of people think we're against all government and all spending, but I think the job of the federal government is to defend the country and build and maintain the interstate transportation systems like highways, airspace, and sea and river navigation. That's pretty much it. But this is exactly the kind of thing that reminds us that a wise and frugal government, in the words of Thomas Jefferson, could be our friend instead of our enemy. It was that it was late as the 1950s. We had a government just like that. Could be that way again, too, if we just got out and voted for one. You know, Obama spent over $500 million on a solar cell company that went out of business right after they took the money. That money could not only have detected this mini asteroid, it very likely could have averted it as well. That's just something to think about. For PJTV, I'm Bill Whittle.